Live from Seattle, Washington, it's The Cube at Tableau Conference 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Tableau. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back. We're live in Seattle for Tableau's Data 14 conference, hashtag Data 14. If you want to join us, go to crowdchat.net slash data14. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE. Our next guest is Ben Jones, Senior Product Marketing Manager with Tableau. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Um, Tableau, a lot of great press, a lot of great community. Um, is that part of the plan? Is that part of the marketing plan? Or is it just the great product sells itself? Um, huge success on the product side. Clearly the product announcements are here, but great community. People have Kool-Aid injection of Tableau. People are happy. Right, no doubt. I mean, the product is great, but you're right. I mean, there's a community aspect that's hard to engineer. And it seems like it's grown out of a number of factors. One of which, Tableau Public, the product I manage, is literally a free version of the software that anyone can use and share data online. So it just creates this network of individuals who are kind of having this dialogue around data uh, in the public arena. So it's a lot of fun. You know, we had someone come up to our, us yesterday and said, oh, we're big fans of theCUBE, thanks for sharing the data and the commentary. Um, and then we started talking to her and she was a woman who was changing careers. And, and she was talking about how, um, you know, I'm not going to name names, but the other older vendors. Sure. Big upfront license, huge heavy lift to deploy, um, a lot of work to get the time to value. And, you know, it brings up the comments that Jeff and I were talking. So the, the question for you to, to comment on is, is that, you know, we are living in a cloud, uh, born in the cloud kind of mentality where people are shifting into new roles and the freemium model is working. So can you comment, obviously that's in your wheelhouse, so yeah. you know, how has that played out? Obviously, um, people play with it, get, get addicted. Sure. Obviously visualization is like the eye candy, but the data behind is real. Yeah. So how has that rolled out? I mean, obviously freemium makes a lot of sense, but right. from a business perspective, share some color on, on how that's rolled out. Well, I think one of the remarkable things about Tableau Public is just that since it's free, you know, journalists around the world can use, uh, and bloggers as well, can use Tableau to visualize everything from the World Cup to the election results. And so it allows people like me, for example, when I first got involved and started using Tableau, I was able to download Tableau Public and start to use it. And like you said, you know, really get hooked on it. So it creates, I think, an environment where people can try. And when they learn our software, they see that it is actually very easy to use. And so, like you said, you know, they really start to get addicted to it. Um, and so, I, I think it was just a great stroke of genius on the part of the founders to sit there and say, hey, you know, Tableau is really all about visualizing data, seeing and understanding data. Not just company data, we're talking about any data, data that's in the public arena even. Um, and so, how can we go about allowing individuals to um, talk about data at a higher level than just within companies? So, it's created a little bit of a, a uh, a momentum happening where, like you said, you know, I'm included in this as well, of people changing careers to join. What they see is just a really uh, a way of speaking uh, data. And so, um, so, talk about how journalists would use that. So obviously we, have, we, are, we love data, we have, our data we have a data science uh, team. Um, right. Advertising is kind of going away and, um, in the sense of the old banner ads, but people want, the data seems to be the asset in media. Um, yeah. What, what, what can we do with, with Tableau Public? Well, a journalist, you know, they're going to kind of be making a point, and data journalism is a term you'll see um, out there, and it's, it's really um, uh, becoming more and more common, but the reality is data journalism has been around for a long time. What's different now is that there's a whole lot more data. The tools that are available to the journalist to make use of that data are becoming easier and easier to use, like Tableau. And so we work with you know, journalists like, say for example, Sarah Riley at the New York Daily News. Um, Buena Ceres has an you know, organization called La Nacion, and they're just essentially uh, augmenting, enhancing their stories with interactive data, um, day in and day out. And it's really a global phenomenon, so sometimes we'll look at the top 10 uh, visualizations on Tableau Public worldwide, and you know, we'll see uh, visualizations from people as far you know, from Chile to, to Belarus. And so, 
sometimes the top 10 doesn't even include one from the United States. So it's very global and uh, a journalist sees uh, data as a way to, to make a very compelling point. So is it integrated to the journalist workflow or is it into more on the CMS side? Because obviously we have the blog, we have WordPress and a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Um, yeah. There's Twitter data, we have that as well. Um, is it, where do you guys sit? Who uses Tableau, the, the actual writers or the? Yeah, in some cases. So John Schoen, uh, who's an, uh, a reporter at CNBC in New Jersey, creates the visualizations himself. Sometimes we'll see uh, a newsroom have a team of specialists that work with data, and they'll be paired up with a reporter to create um, an interactive graphic for that reporter's story. But since the software is easier to use, you do see individual reporters themselves, bloggers as well, um, creating their own visualizations for their own stories. In fact, even sometimes finding the story based on the data discovery itself. So the uh, Nate Silver was here last year, or mm -hmm. here, but in DC, you guys had uh, him. Obviously, he right. put, he's the poster child for data journalism because you know the, the election coverage. Right. How he's doing at uh, ESPN, we'll see how that plays out. But but that is the trend. I mean, you see that. I'm mean, obviously he was speaking last year. Um, any new updates around that front that you can share in terms of trends around? that kind of new, new role? No, well, even since last year when Nate uh, gave his great keynote, we've seen more uh, data journalism specific sites launch. So the Upshot by New York Times, Vox, uh, these other sites where you know, the data is really um, front and center in, in a, a broad uh, swath of their content. Um, where I think it's going though, actually, believe it or not, is that it's just going to become part and parcel to the way a journalist does their work. It's not going to be necessarily something that's a, a specialty anymore. Um, for example, video journalism or photo journalism, those were buzzwords of the past as well. Now it's just integrated into the way those stories are told. So I think the same will be true of interactive data uh, within the sphere of journalism. You're just going to start to see, and you know, in the years down the road, that's just kind of expected to, to be a way to articulate a point. Um, and hopefully what will follow there is an increase in the numerical literacy of the population. Also it adds a, as a new element to the production, right? So I mean, to me, obviously tweet, people tweet all the time, oh yeah, you know, had the hot dog for lunch, or they talk, talk about something specific, domain expertise. Um, type chats, tech chats. Sure. We have the crowd chat application container, engagement container. So data's being acquired. So how do you guys view that these new sources of data and, and how does someone get their data into Tableau Public? Yeah, it's a great question. So Tableau Public is a version of the application that can connect to Excel files, text files, access databases, but you know, there's all these storehouses out there. This is open data movement where virtually every country around the world, right, has some kind of a portal where you can go get and download that data. But it's not really easy to make a lot of sense of what's in there. It's accessible, but it's not necessarily something that people are gleaning insight from unless someone does the work of visualizing it. So where Tableau comes in is it's the tool to be able to connect to all that raw data and create it out of that a visualization that people can understand, and what we see is dwell times go up. If you have a story with a data visualization on it, the reader's going to stay. There's something for them to do. They can check it out. Um, they can explore the data for themselves. Sharing goes way up, especially if you let them drill down to their part of the country. Maybe there's a, a zip code lookup, and I can see what this uh, story, maybe it's uh, IRS contributions or like in my neck of the woods. They're much more likely to share on social when you give them that kind of a story. You know, so. Ben, I kind of, smile because you know sometimes I say a lot of things that are wrong but sometimes I say things that are right. I wrote a post in 2008 I think it was on my old blog before I started Silicon Angle and it was around Twitter and I said data is the new development kit. Back in the old days when, when I was writing software hmm. you had to get a development kit you know Microsoft yeah. or what, what not. Um, and you know that ends up becoming a true thing now. You guys essentially have created an abstraction for programming where data is the programming tool where the data is the resource. So, um, can you share some updates on how the product itself has changed from even go back into you know, a few years back into today to make it more user friendly? So sure. that, you know, the fact that journalists can do it is a testament, but what other new things are you adding? Yeah, well when we launched Tableau 8, the game changer there for the journalists was what we call freeform dashboards. So instead of having to arrange all of your views in a tiled fashion, you can drag and drop and place things in a floating manner. That really opened up a whole world of multimedia. So you can put a video in the corner of the, the timeline and have that interact with the data itself. You can float 
a logo or an image or a picture from the story uh, right there within the charter dashboard. So that was a big game changer. That was last year. Um, what we've done this year, uh, which I think has been uh, huge for journalists, is frankly making it available on the Mac. I mean, newsrooms across the world are <laughs> very commonly used Mac. So we were real excited in this Tableau public team to be able to finally go into those newsrooms and not have to ask them to use, uh, you know, boot camp or, or one of those virtual machines. Um, and they love that. Where is going from here? You know, we've got this wealth of author-generated content on our server, and it's not always as accessible as we want it to be, so we're really seeing a great uh, pathway forward for Tableau to make uh, searchable, findable, um, more uh, integrating into a community-style um, site where people can follow their favorite uh, data visualization author or comment on a viz or things like that are, are some things we're exploring. But we're really trying to take this uh, momentum and build on it. So. You know what's interesting about, I mean, first of all, I, I love to geek out on data journalism. It's what I think about pretty much uh, every, every minute of the day when I'm not uh, relaxing. But uh, data is the, the, the gravity around a lot of the stuff going on around conversations. So when you look at the, the social web, yep. you look at the communities that like you guys have, Sharing and collaboration is a big part of the new production that we see. And so you're right. starting to see some of that now with some of the crowdsourcing stuff with our crowd chat. You see people um, you know, sharing uh, content with attribution and whatnot. It's going on, but that, that's the trend. So yep. what are you guys doing on the sharing front? Because when data gets created and visualized, mm -hmm. it is a presentation. I mean, infographics is a good example of you know, an elementary version of it, but when you start getting into someone who's got some unique skill set or domain expertise, they might stumble upon a little nugget that can open up a conversation, open up more, yeah. more content. Do you guys have a sharing element? Yeah, Tableau, it? well Tableau Public was really built for sharing, so at the bottom of every visualization is a share um, footer that doesn't just share the visualization, but it shares the version of the dashboard that the reader has filtered to. So in other words, if my home state is Washington and there's election results, I click on Washington and I see the results in my area. When I share that using the footer in a Tableau public visualization, it's sending to my network and my connections that version of the dashboard that focuses in on the part of the story that I want to share and tell. So, uh, but also, you know, Tableau Public, sort of like YouTube, you can get the embed code, and we really love to see it when there's republishing occurring, when people are talking about uh, visualizations that others have made or posted. Um, so yeah, it's, and not only that, but it's a great way for people to be able to learn. You can download the workbook itself with Tableau Public, kind of reverse engineer what that person did, and see how they made what they made. So it's a great way for people to learn some best practices and some techniques. Have you had any inquiries about the CMS side of the business? I mean, one of the things I always rant and pound the fist on the table is, I mean, we love WordPress, don't get me wrong, but right. WordPress is kind of old and clunky yep. Yep. Uh, CMS. Now you're sure. seeing, uh, we had build our own CMS on CrowdChat, but you're starting to see things like Tagboard, mm -hmm. um, um, Rebel Mouses of the world. You're seeing these companies having a whole new style, kind of an unstructured, in a way, canvas. You guys certainly showed a lot of that demo on stage. Yeah. Do you see you guys filling that gap or other cool CMSs out there? Because if you have the ability to pull in multiple visualizations, yep. the storytelling becomes really compelling. Well, with the embed code, the goal is to be able to let the Tableau public author take their visualization and drop it right into whatever CMS they're using. Um, it works better, uh, so WordPress, is an example of, uh, WordPress.org is an example of a CMS where it works particularly well. Um, a lot of these newsrooms have very customized CMS applications yeah. and sometimes that can be tricky. But there's usually workarounds where you can, you know, embed an iframe or something of that nature. But I don't see us really kind of becoming a CMS, more allowing but you'll support But you'll to, support it through the iframe, basically. Yes, That's pretty right. pretty much the vehicle. So similar to YouTube, our servers on the Tableau public side are serving up these interactive visualizations. And so the goal is just allow that journalist, blogger, researcher to be able to put their work in whatever site it is that they want to share. Yeah, and work. one of the things I, you know, I also write for, uh, contributed to Forbes. Uh -huh. And they don't let you put iframes except for like a short list. Right. Um, hopefully that will change, but is that a common thread or is that just a one-off? No, it, so I think it was more common in the past. WordPress.com is an example, which is obviously a very popular blogging platform where you needed to have a short list uh, 
embed code to be able to have a, uh, an interactive um, iframe serve it up on the site. But going forward, we're, I'm not seeing that incurring more. I'm, I'm assuming more it's, it's uh, as long as it's HTML5 compliant, you know, there's a lot of ways in which those CMSs, uh, in, for the most part, the ones that where we see trouble are where they're, I would call them antiquated versions of CMSs, or very highly customized to the point where it's difficult because of all of the, um, just the elaborate nature of the CMS that got built. But the standard ones are, are pretty easy to use. So we're going to have to kick the tires. I was talking to uh, Dave Martin, also some of the product guys. We're going to try to get some of our crowd chat data into Tableau to, oh, cool. to get that up, visualized, because just, I just love what you guys have done with the product. Um, but to change gears, I want to get your perspective on, on journalism, since we're talking about journalism. Um, there seems to be kind of like a change going on in journalism. What's your take on it? And obviously, you know, with the now more connected mobile devices, now with visualization, do you see any, any bright spots in journalism? And, and what do you wish would, you could change? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, it's an interesting time for journalism. Obviously, you know, we've seen some, um, it's, a, it's a tough profession, right? I mean, world from a, from a global standpoint, obviously we're seeing some stories of these, um, you know, some tragic type stories coming in, but also freedom of the press is slipping in a, in a lot of countries, and so that's a concern. Um, but regardless, and even in some countries where uh, maybe they're less democratic than others, um, we're definitely seeing journalists have an interest in showing interactive data. That's, I think, a positive trend. Um, and as I mentioned before, I hope that it becomes just part and parcel to the way a journalist does their job. But I had the chance to go to the New School uh, University in New York City uh, last week and work with Scott Klein, who's a top data journalist at ProPublica. And I'll tell you, the, you know, these uh, university students, designers, journalists, they really took to it. They seemed like they were very uh, excited and passionate. They had a lot of fun interacting with the data. So I think there's a new wave of journalists coming in that are really going to find this to be um, you know, an activity, an activity that's not very, as intimidating. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things, obviously, we we have all open content, so we believe in open data, sharing the data, um, whether on the Cube or, or on the blog or on Wiki, Wikibon. Um, but we interviewed Andrew Kreitzer, Kreitzer um, young kid coming uh -huh. out of a UVA. Okay. He's a total tableau junkie. Right. And it's changed his career because he's just in math, not a stats geek, but yep. he's not an operational guy. He's basically turned it into a career, now working at LinkedIn. He was on the cube earlier. Um, that's the trend. The younger generation. This is like oxygen to them, right? It's like a PowerPoint. Yeah, I think so. And, and um, we're just having a conversation over breakfast with one of my colleagues from India. And same thing over there. You know, they're really trying to find their own identity with these tools and try to find the way to express, uh, you know, what they want to express. But um, a great example. A great example of a journalist who has really risen to the top using Tableau Public is Chad Skelton, who's based out of um, Vancouver, British Columbia. So he just recently won the Global Editor Network's Data Journalism Portfolio Award uh, of 2014. So four of his five visualizations that he submitted were Tableau Public visualizations. And so he won you know, kind of uh, an amazing award. Um, so it's nice to see, like you said, these individuals finding a way to use the tools at their disposal tell the stories of our time, really, and get recognized for that. Um, so I think it's gratifying for all of us, especially on my Tableau Public team, when we see journalists really um, you know, earn quite, quite a number of accolades for their work. Yeah, and any, any data journalists out there watching, you know, we're hiring at SiliconANGLE, so if you're interested <laughs> in, in the geek side, we certainly love data, yeah. and we have a, you know, our own little data practice. The thing I want to bring up now is my little, little always you know, rant about the blogging and publishing is, and yep. the media is, it's, it's a real-time game now, right? So you have the old model of, I need to get a source material, I got to call someone up, validate the facts, more and more you hear, closest, sources close to the company. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. the Wall Street Journal's trying to beat that blogger and you got a zillion percent journalists now. So sure. data becomes instant source material. So one of the trends that's really a bright spot is, the source material is right there. Yeah, and it's there can, to mine. It's there to mine, Absolutely. so the new journalism technique is source material, right. obviously Rolodex, Twitter. Yep. <laughs> Two, data to back it up, or fact checking. So that seems to ha have, uh, the lack of good data has kind of dumbed down the journalism and people have been complaining about the content mills and, and the lack of, of, of source material. But now, yeah. you guys have this tool. Right, well, uh, a couple examples. One, after the Boston Marathon bombing, we saw The Guardian in the UK 
mineboston.com for, I would say is maybe one of the positive sides of the story, which was all the individuals that came out and offered a couch, a hot shower, a hot meal for people who were stranded in the area. So what they did is they mined a message board and they turned it into a timeline of data, visualiza you know, data visualization showing how these offers began kind of pouring in. Um, but that data was there and you know, it was accessible for anyone and they were the, the creative uh, thinkers to go and mine that, turn that into a visualization that told a very compelling side of the story. Another example, last year with Obamacare, you know, there was a period of time where the data was not very easy to find. It was uh, not forthcoming and people were looking for it. So we did see some journalists get very creative with looking at social sentiment, looking at what people are saying as a way to discuss the story. So the data is out there, you know, whether it's being generated um, in social media, whether it's posted to some portal uh, by a government, or you know, whether you mine it some other way. There's tools like import.io, which is a tool that, you know, similar to Tableau, you don't have to program, you can go in and actually go and mine What's that data. Import.io, and they're based out of the UK, and we see a lot of times where someone will use import.io to go find and mine a, a website for data, connect that data once they have it with Tableau, and then they're off and running. So it's getting easier and easier to the point where you don't have to be an expert programmer to get this done. So we got one minute left. I want to jump on the whole storytelling concept because I'm sure. a big, big fan of storytelling, but I always yeah. roll my eyes because it's like, okay, it sounds so cliche. It's been around for a while, but when it starts being used as a kind of like as a gimmick, it seems like a gimmick when people just punch it around. I know you guys talk about your keynote, I mean to, to get on you guys, but <laughs> how can you tell a story if you don't know yep. what the story is? So the right. emphasis is on data prep. So import IO, tools like that. Data prep is a huge issue and, and an opportunity for you guys. Sure. What are you guys doing on the data prep side so far for the journalists who aren't the programmers, who might not be really fluent in these toolings? Yep. What can we do as journalists to be better yep. data preppers? Well, a lot of times we'll see 80% of the time spent on a project is what we call data munging or wrangling or and uh, in Chris Dolte's keynote uh, yesterday morning, I think he showed a tool which is going to be a game changer for journalists because you'll be able to download a, a spreadsheet from the federal government which has headers and is formatted awkwardly and has comments in the footers and merged cells. And in the past, that would have been a nightmare to work with, right? You'd have to spend forever turning yeah. this thing to a, a workable version. And so what Tableau is doing is investing in uh, features to be able to automatically go in and detect where the data is, make that something much, much easier to connect with, to try to minimize the time spent wrangling uh, these data sets. So that's a top so. priority for yeah, you guys? That, uh, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the easier it is to connect to your data, the more likely it is you're going to get your insight out of it. Uh, and it's all about time to insight. So Ben, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I'll give you the final word. What are you excited about these days uh, besides the, the, your product? Outside of your product, what, what, what's, uh, what's getting you all jazzed up? Obviously you're active on the social channels, you're out there tweeting away, talking to customers. Right. Um, the world's transforming, yep. DevOps, born in the cloud, a whole new era of modern infrastructure. Sure. sure. And new benefits to come. What are you getting excited about? I mean the growth is, itself is exciting. Uh, our team's growing so we get to work with more talented people. But with Tableau Public, you know, every month someone comes out of the woodwork as being an incredibly talented individual who really changes the way we think about uh, the way data can be shared. So I'm just excited about the next year and who we, who we get to meet. So. And what's the big mega trend you think that's powering the opportunity for you guys? Um, ease of use, right? I mean, it's really, it's really a UX thing. I mean, it, to, the to the point where this can become something that's simple that anyone can do. I mean, it really doesn't have to be something that only a specialist can do. So that to me, I think is the part of what's fueling our growth is just the fact that we're trying to reach out and let anyone uh, at any level of the organization make use of, of their data, so. Ben Jones, Senior Product Man Marketing Manager at Tableau, talking about uh, Tableau Public for journalists, for normal people who can put stories together, data, and uh, be participating in the consumerization of journalism, <laughs> I guess was a good term. Uh, ben, thanks for coming on, we really appreciate it. This is live in, in Seattle. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you, John.